What's up guys? Welcome to Exactly Gaming. My name is Zach and today we are back with more 60 parsecs. That's right. In the last episode, we landed on the planet. It was just Emmett, Tom, and April. Tom was immediately insubordinate, so we did starve him to death. You can see his skeleton right over there. And we landed on Mutopia, so we're doing alright. Then a bunch of nanobots came in and formed a new crewmate, Megan Mann, and she is currently out on an expedition, but we're gonna send her to the location of a pyramid we just found whenever she gets back. Her or April, I haven't decided yet. All right, but we just were trying to overpower Backy, the backup AI, so let's see. While Backy was in control, you asked the life April Angel to leap up and shove some armor into the rapidly revolving rotor. The fan jammed just long enough for me to reboot Backy. I must keep a tighter leash on him in the future. He's more of a superficial intelligence, but don't say that to his face. He also has a frail ego. All right, uh, April keeps asking for soup, and we made soup. The madness has released its hold on you, Captain. You are no longer insane. Probably. That's good. That's good. Good to know. Let's make another soup. No, we can't. Never mind. Interesting news, Captain. It appears there is a hollow space behind one of the wall panels. A hidden room, maybe? A secret stash? It would be worth checking out. What's your approach? Uh, whatever's best. Agility. Hopefully, Megan will be back soon with food. <clears throat> with food would be, would be the, the, hey, she's back with food. Yesterday, I brought your attention to the hidden space behind one of the wall panels. You did your best to access it, but to no avail. We will probably never learn what's on the other side. My computation suggests there's only 1% chance of there being any treasure, like a really big soup can. In short, definitely not worth the trouble. Megan has survived her wild romp in the swamp. Wild swamp romp? She appears a bit sickly, well-fed, and upset, but the primary focus is that she is not an alien doppelganger. We think. You pay attention as she begins to recount her field day in the muck. Megan accidentally kicked open a toxic swamp flower. Rather unpleasant and probably very unhealthy. The swamp is chemically rich. Megan harvested many useful component compounds, not components. I'm still trying to figure out how or why tomato soup is available universe-wide. Anyway, Megan brought back rations. Three, hell yeah. Quite a trip, eh? Good thing Megan is home safe. Right, she's just tired, not even hurt. Hell yeah. <clears throat> Speaking of which, we probably should make a first aid kit. I know it's going to take a while, but we got some food. She's starving, so we'll let her eat. And since she just ate, we're going to send her out on an expedition to the pyramid. We're going to give her the cow statue and the book so she can translate. Yep. There's nothing to report, Captain. I suggest you... Captain, would you mind covering your mouth when you yawn? I thought you got a good night's sleep. Wait, could this be boredom? Yes, I've heard that you humans need excitement in your lives to function properly. I'm not going to do the book because she's going to leave with the book. So we're not doing anything about it. You're just bored. Deal with the boredom. I like how it's like Tom Thompson, dead. In case you didn't know by looking at him, he's dead, by the way. <laughs> Alright. So, April's heading out, and looks like we're good to go. Yesterday it started pretty slow and boring, and it stayed this way. I'm not programmed for your entertainment, Captain, so don't count on me to keep you occupied. If they wanted you to have fun in the shuttle, they would have installed the clown, computerized assistant instead. What's clown stand for? Computerized, laughing, um, on... Weekends now got it fucking nailed it guys. Don't don't second-guess me if you know what clown stands for leave What you think clown stands for in the comments? There we go. Let's do that <laughs> April set off to learn the secrets of their pyramid sending positive thoughts. She will come home. You are starving captain I recommend you find something to eat right An alien vessel is approaching their ship is rigged with a light show sync to the music They started blasting as soon as we opened comms. Oh, they the dance lord tribe were yeah You mess with the wrong crew Emmett and, and Megan are, are limber Okay, they're about to dance your asses off. <clears throat> dance your asses off. Not even their asses off. They're going to dance so much, they're going to dance your asses off. You accepted the Dance Lord's challenge. They beamed you and Megan up to their ship, and you sock hop straight to their leader, Warbop. But he was no match for your wicked footwork and synchronized snapping. Warbop acknowledged your skills and let you go with his blessing. He even refilled our supply of chemicals. The sock hop ended with everyone sipping non-alcoholic fruit punch from a big glass bowl. Captain, I think you've been practicing your moves in the mirror. Hell yeah, all right. <clears throat> so now we got how much chemicals do we have? We have 54 chemicals, 35 material, and 94 power. That's badass. All right. Hopefully April finds something at that uh, pyramid. That's pretty cool. All right. Captain, we've encountered alien life. Some type of protozoan parasite has contaminated our water supply. I have no idea how the system was contaminated. Too late now. I don't think the infection will kill you, but my data on these organisms is not complete. Do you want me to tough it out or purify the water? Yeah, let's purify. Yeah, tough it out. Let's tough out these toxins. Day 30, alright. 
You failed to purify the contaminated drinking water. Eventually, both your and Megan's symptoms passed, but it wasn't pretty. In the end, you survived, but the soup can you were forced to consume for hydration didn't regenerate you at all, and you wish the shuttle had more than one space toilet. You could use some more rations, Captain. All right, Megan keeps asking for soup. We're just hungry, but we're okay. We're gonna make a soup. We got lots of chemicals, so we're making soup. Can you hear me? Ugh, you say are in these situations, right? I hate raising my volume, but that malfunctioning body odor removal filter is making a racket. I think it's malfunctioning. Right. <clears throat> I love how they say malfunctioning body or removal thing. I think it's malfunctioning. Is it? Are you sure? Oh, Jesus. What happened, April? Oh, no. Oh, no. You fixed the body odor. <laughs> That's not good. You fixed the body odor removal filter for replacing the worn out screws with tape. The cabin no longer smells of unwashed astronauts. Everyone on board can think clear without constant din drowning every thought. April completed her voyage to the pyramid. She seems weak, in need of a bite, and upset, but our primary concern is that she's still in one piece. You listen intently as she begins to report her pyramid adventure. April witnessed holographic movies depicting the downfall of this world. She used the artifact to turn them off, which unfortunately shattered it. Perhaps it had limited use as a remote control. The pyramid guardians awoke and tried stabbing April with their spears. She escaped the stone monstrosities, but was injured. April used a handbook to identify useful chemicals in the high priest chambers. April found plentiful chemical stockpiles in the embalming room. Damn, while exploring the pyramid, April stumbled upon a vast chamber once used for performing rituals. Upon the altar was a stone tablet covered in an alien script. April brought the tablet back with her. I can translate it, Captain, but it will take time. When April reached the summit of the pyramid, she saw three towers on the horizon, each bearing a different astrological symbol. It would be wise to visit them. Who scattered all these cans so far away from Earth? Weird. Anyway, April picked up some soup along the way. Hell yeah. Nothing else to report. The pyramid was perilous, but April survived. All right, nice. You seem alert, Captain. I commend the way you've been taking care of your mental well-being. You should know that peak mental condition means increased efficiency when it comes to performing tasks. All right, I'm sorry to report that April went nuts. Damn it. <clears throat> All right, insane, weak, tired, hungry. That's not great, but we're going we're gonna to get her fixed up. Don't you worry, April. We got you. Don't put down the hammer and, and nails. Let's get, let's get her feeling better first. Uh, Megan's starving, so let's feed her. Don't need her dying on me. And Megan can go just, yeah, search the, the moon tower. Star tower and sun tower. All right, Megan, you're going to search the sun tower, or star tower. You go. And you're going to bring, <coughs> do we have the idol? Yeah, we have an idol. Good. Good, good, good. You go to this. Yeah, you go to the star tower. You bring the idol. Everything will be fine. And the book? Do you have the book? No, the book's gone. That's okay. You just bring the idol and go about your business. All right, hopefully we'll get her taken care of. Something seems to be troubling you, Captain. I've registered, uh, you keep staring outside the window into the endless void. Uh, why? Did you lose something? I see. You're remembering Earth. I admit it was nice, before the nuclear barbecue, that is. I can switch off for a second, Captain. Do you wish to have a moment to yourself? Nah. Captain's, Captain's resilient. He's got this. All right, we're gonna get Megan healed up so that she's not weak anymore. Oh, God, now she's just nuts. That's right, Captain. Keep your emotions in check and develop unhealthy coping mechanisms. That should keep you standing. Why, so why sulk by yourself when you could share all the grim topics with your crewmate? Isn't complaining one of the human pastimes of you humans? Megan went to climb the Star Tower. I think happy thoughts for her safe return. All right. We're working on that so she's not insane anymore. You're starving. You can wait another day. Captain, April spotted a blue veiny fruit growing out of a crack in the ground nearby. It's pulsating slightly. Should someone give the fruit a try? Normally, I'd refrain from leaving such a rash and irresponsible decision up to a human, but there are some empty stems nearby. Perhaps it's edible. You know what? Let's see. Let's see if we can not waste a soup and have Captain eat that. That'd be great. I would, I would be really on board with that. You decided that the blue fruit near the ship was worth trying. Your face gluttonous with pleasure as you sunk your teeth in, before quickly turning to horror. The other half was full of purple, wriggling worms. You began trying to spit it out, but fell into a spasm, and woke a few minutes later saying your mind was buzzing as if it doubled the speed. You flipped into a handstand and began perambulating around. Clearly those worms did something. Let's hope the effects don't turn. Now he's starving, so let's eat. She's crazy, but we have the sock for her, so she's gonna do that. And what do we got here? I have news regarding the stone tablet which was brought here from the pyramid. While it was written in alien tongue, I think I finally found a terrestrial language with similar structure. That revelation could be the key to decoding the tablet. If everything goes as planned, I should have the translation ready for you first thing tomorrow. Hell yeah. Alright, let's get April back to her normal self. Let's eat and let's figure out what that tablet says. 
The tablet says if you go to the Tower of the Mega Witcher, you die. <laughs> I'm happy to report that the translation of the Ancient Stone Tablet has been completed. Turns out it is an old legend. This world was once a lush paradise, inhabited by highly evolved intelligent aliens. They lived for millennia, never growing old, until they decided to ascend into the stars. Before doing so, they made the planet barren as to not invite other settlers in case they decided to come back. However, the legend also says there is a way to restore life to the planet. The text becomes vague at this point, but it tells of a pros prophecy that needs to be fulfilled in order for the planet's core to be reactivated. The heart of the sun shall be set ablaze. The moon shall be nourished by the fruit of the earth. The object of worship shall ignite the star. Oh shit, I sent her with the thing to the star, didn't I? Yeah. The moon shall be nourished by a fruit of the earth. Like tomatoes? <laughs> so I need to bring tomatoes to the moon thing, and then I have to bring, uh, I'm writing this down. Tomatoes to moon, probably, right? And lighter to sun. And I think Megan already brought the idol to the thing, which is awesome. It seems like a riddle of some sort, but you're a smart one, for a human anyway. I'm sure you have it figured out already. I do. I do have it figured out already. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Megan is still on expedition. All right. Warning, warning, we have a breach. The ship is about to be contaminated. I'm engaging all the emergency protocols available. My efforts appear to be useless. This contamination cannot be avoided. I fucking don't have anything. Are you starving now, April? Damn it. Gotta eat. Alright, what can I make? I need to make... Can't make anything that'll, like, save me in a situation like that. Let's just work on a first aid kit. We got a lot, we got a lot of materials. This is amazing. It's the most, like, raw materials I've ever had. Day 35, crap. <laughs> uh... Haven't you heard, Captain? This ship got contaminated, so please explain to me in a way that a humble AI like myself can understand why you would not protect yourself. <clears throat> the fever, the coughing, and all other symptoms I can confidently identify as icky are the result of this unfortunate crisis. The good news is they should be over. Soon. Megan has returned from her climb up the Star Tower. She appears a little under the weather, in need of sustenance, and traumatized, <clears throat> but the thing to remember is that she's not rotting in the dark somewhere. You listen as she begins to recount her treacherous... The tower's mossy walls produce some toxic fumes, and Megan breathed in some of them. That can't be good. Megan collected plenty of chemicals from the various mosses. There was a star-shaped room at the tower's summit. An empty pedestal stood in the middle. Megan placed the artifact on the pedestal, and it sank into the ground. Your crew is now one step closer to restoring life to this planet. On her trip outside, Megan found a working battery. Hell yeah, where does all this soup come from? Yeah, for soup. That's all. Megan's expedition was a success. Nice. Great success. Everybody, uh, is everyone, oh, she's weak and tired, and we're sick. We're working on a first aid kit. We have so many chemicals, I imagine. 117, 35, and 94. Jesus. All right. I love to see that. Handbook damage. Try not do or do not. There is no try. Every day that must end with one clear decision. One clear decision. Hopefully the right one. All right. While checking on the ship's exterior, you stumble upon something half buried under the dirt. You take a few minutes to uncover it and find that it's apparently a can of soup held in a stone hand. You could try to pull it out by force and probably damage the carving in the process, or leave it be and just spend some time examining it on the spot. It might be hard locating it later, though. The storms on this planet cover everything up so fast. Good thing I'm a fucking genius. <laughs> yeah! Captain Emmett genius for the win? I think there's a really smart crew, though, too, because April's really smart and Megan's really smart. You decide that uncovered can of soup you found next to our shuttle should be left unmolested. You did take a good look at it in the carving that held in place, before it got covered by the dirt again, though. It made you wonder about how, even on this alien and uncaring world, you found something familiar. It filled you with a sense of calm, quite welcome in your current circumstance. All right. Hungry and weak. Let's give everybody food, because we're all sick and we need it. And we're working on a first aid kit, but, I mean, it's it's gotta go to Captain, otherwise we'll lose. Captain, I'm detecting a troubling buildup of mental tension. A recommended course of action. Throw an epic party. I took the liberty of inviting myself. Invite the entire crew? But of course, the more the merrier, I guess. How about we invite someone new, eh, Captain? Someone you don't know? Or we make ourselves a new companion? Yes, how do we do it? I don't have anything. Don't have anything to do it with, computer. <clears throat> I'll start building stuff as soon as I can get everybody healthy again. Day 37. Hey there, Captain Buzzkill. Feeling better? I bet you'd be much better off after a night of partying with your friend Astro. Your loss. You look dreadful, sir. You remain ill. April remains ill. Megan is still weak. <laughs> All right. Hey, first aid kit. Let's get Captain fixed up. Right into another first aid kit. Shit, what do I need for the first aid kit? What the hell do I not have? Oh, I already have a first aid kit, so I can't do that. Damn it. I'm detecting high levels of an unknown toxin in the air system. Analysis shows it isn't too dangerous, but it has hallucinogenic properties, so you shouldn't be breathing it long term. All right, let's tape that up. Let's tape that up. And I need a lighter. That's what I need to craft. Do I, do I have a lighter? Oh, I do have a lighter. Okay. That just wasn't an option for that. Okay, so we have a lighter. We can repair the book if needed. 
We need to craft probably a sock. How many days? Let's just craft soup because that's what it's going to take one time. And Captain will be healthy after this. He's using that, right? Yep. Let's give April food because she's weak. And let's give you food. And let's build. I know everyone's not hungry, <clears throat> but I think sometimes if you give them food, it will make them a little healthier when they're sick or tired or weak. You use tape to repair the crack. It's never a bad idea to use some tape. Seconds after the crack was sealed, you felt better. You remain very mentally stable, all right? April continues to look ill. Let's make her one of these immediately. I'm a machine, and machines cannot hear voices. The voices that I'm not hearing right now are telling, getting very loud, though. Oh, you hear them, too? My weight sensors are picking up something as well. A two-dimensional species. That explains why my camera's missing them. Quite vicious, I gather. With one decisive yell, the voices are approaching fast. The air inside the door looks very empty, yet very hostile all of a sudden. How will you defend us, Captain? Uh, with my lighter that hopefully won't break, so I have to repair it before I go to the other tower. <laughs> Day 39. A two-dimensional species invaded your ship. You could not see them coming until you turned on a lighter. Suddenly, the empty space around you cast a multitude of shadows on every surrounding wall. Invisible to the 3D world most of the time, they could not handle the spotlight. Bashfully, they slipped out one by one. Staring might be impolite, but apparently rudeness wins battles. You all look bolder and stand a little straighter since that victory, all right? I know April's still ill. How is she? She's weak, but loyal. That's good. Just, get, just keep getting rest. Captain, a hole appeared right next to our shuttle overnight. It's producing smelly vapors and a nasty gurgling. While it's not an immediate threat, I'd appreciate it if you made it stop. The smell is foul, the noise is annoying, and both offend my sensors. Yeah, we got tape. Right. <clears throat> wow, he's resourceful, science specialist, alert, vigorous, and hungry. If only he could go out on missions. Gotta get everybody else there. All right. Day 40. All right, we're moving on up. I appreciate the crew taping over that hole in the ground. Your cheers were silenced by the realization that the hole was a mouth. The camouflage creature's gob, uh, gob gaped open and thrashing about gave you a fright. Problem solved. Now how about your deteriorated mental health? Oh, shit. Megan's insane. She's sick and weak. And we got one day left on that, so we got a lot to do. Captain, a metallic cylinder has been blown next to the shuttle by the violent winds. What an opportunity for research. It consists of two sections. One's opening is stuck and needs to be forced to gape. The other is locked, requiring a deft hand to open. Which shall it be? Oh, yeah. Flexibility all the way. All right. Next, we'll get April healed. <clears throat> then she can go out on a mission. And then we can get the captain feeling a little better. You decided to deal with the lock of the cylindrical container. Although it clearly wasn't made for human hands, you solved it quickly. Inside, you found an odd collection of doodads and doohickeys, most depicting cans or tomatoes, reminding you of soup. You unwrapped something resembling a first aid kit from a piece of cloth. The gale sta started up again, so you took it and left the rest of the cylinder's contents be. Soon, the wind blew it away in the distance. Right. Oh, crafting canceled. Okay, so we got a first aid kit and we got the resources back. Hey, I'll take it. Right, let's get her healthy. Boom, and now we need to make a sock. So Megan's not crazy, and the captain needs to eat. The radio waves just won't stay silent. Captain, the string of information we're currently receiving is like a Morse code binary and the sound of a Geiger counter. Whatever's attempting to contact us must be trying everything but the kitchen sink. If regular modes of communication are failing us, perhaps we should try unorthodox methods. Nah, we can't, so we're just gonna, we're just gonna put it in the back of our mind. Day 42, all right. Deciding not to do anything about the mixed transmissions seemed to have no effects initially, but the longer you listen to those blips and bloops, the harder it was for you to concentrate. The communi- the communique <clears throat> only ceased after a loud outburst on your part. You kept shouting very nonsensical things into the ether. It looks like your overall acuity decreased due to this incident. Damn it. Saying he's less intelligent now? Great. All right, April, you're going. All right, you're going to the moon tower, and you're bringing tomatoes. Yeah. Bring tomatoes. <clears throat> and that's all you should need. Go go forth and prosper. She's going and bringing tomatoes, right? Yes, good. The wind, which is blowing ceaselessly for the past few hours, uncovered part of a sculpture in the ship. A cow's muzzle, open as if in expectation. A sacrificial spot, perhaps? Wondering if we have anything to offer this carving. No, I'm not. I'm not putting my lighter in there because I need that. I'm not. I don't want to build another lighter because I have to make sure everyone's not crazy and dead. And that's how you die is by throwing lighters in cow mouths. Okay, I've learned my lesson. Day forty-three. <clears throat> Despite Megan's suggestions, really crazy ass Megan. We're gonna be upset that I didn't go with her. You'd rather not offer anything to the cow statue and wait for it to be covered by the sands once more. You found you and your crewmate thought about it. The hungrier you got, something about its wide open mouth kept coming back to you and the rumbling in your stomachs increased. All right, April went off to climb the moon tower. You're going to use this so you're not crazy. Is he starving again? Jesus Christ. Right, and we're going to make some food. 
You found a couple of rusted and swollen cans of soup in the darkest corners of the ship. Someone must have put them there a long time ago, and then completely forgotten about them. Uh, yes, yes, get those, and now let's actually just make a first aid kit instead. This is gonna take three days, and April's probably gonna come back hurt. And day, day 44. That ancient soup you found gave you pause, and no wonder, it looks older than this ship, and yet, here it is. Who could have left it there? Then again, who cares? Free soup! <laughs> what could go wrong, right? Exactly. I'm worried about Megan. She's been suffering vivid nightmares the past few nights, and wakes up each morning complaining about someone named Calthulu is commanding her to worship it. I've been picking up a steady, unintelligible broadcast from the ruins ever since we crashed here. It may interfere with human brainwaves, specifically the subconscious, inducing negative emotions. I want to run a test and see if positive thinking will counter this broadcast. Who would you like to test it first? Yeah, Megan. She's weak and starving. Let's see if we can get her feeling better. Oh shit, she needs to eat, speaking of starving. <laughs> Day 45. <clears throat> you convinced Megan to think happy thoughts to nullify the broadcast effects, and this mostly made the problem go away. She soon stopped having the nightmares. I decoded the broadcast. It was an ad for an ancient radio drama, The Call of Cthulhu. The advertisers tried mimicking the story's plot in which an eldritch cow monster makes people go crazy by appearing to them in dreams. Uh, clever marketing. Right, let's give her some food. She is starving, we're doing all right, and we're making a first aid kit. Captain, we're receiving a coded transmission of unknown origin. Could be a distress signal, a message of some sort, or pretty much anything else. We don't know until we listen to it. Should I play the transmission? Uh, yeah, let's see what it says. Day 46, all right. Damn it, Megan's back, or April's back, and she's crazy again. <laughs> We've received a transmission yesterday. Turns out it was a message from another group of survivors, lost in space and pleading for help. Unfortunately, it's impossible to pinpoint the exact location of your fellow castaways. However, the knowledge that you are not alone out there is enough to make both yourself and your crewmate feel much better. Mentally, at least. Who knows, maybe one day you'll find them. April has returned from her climb up the moon tower. She appears worn down, well-fed, and traumatized, but what matters is that she's not at the bottom of a ravine somewhere. You pay attention as she begins to recount her thrilling trip outside. April tripped and got hurt trying to navigate the pitch darkness of the tower. She found some minerals in the storeroom. Hell yeah. Atop the tower, April knows a humongous stone bowl covered in mysterious signs. She remembered the prophecy on the pyramid tablet and poured some soup into the bowl. The signs glowed, the soup warmed, and then it evaporated. Now just one last part of the prophecy remains to be fulfilled. She did not expect to find uh, she did not expect to find out there, but there there it was, an old sock. Nobody likes their feet freezing off, I guess, even space monsters. I'm still trying to figure out how or why tomato soup is available universe-wide. Anyway, April brought back some soup. Hell yeah. And we made our first aid kit. April went insane, but she's not hurt, so we're just going to give her the sock she found. She's still weak. We're gonna give her this. She's also hungry. She stayed weak, so yeah, we need to give her that. And we're doing all right there. And we're gonna make, what are we gonna make? Oh, we gotta get rid of that first aid kit first. Captain, where are you? Captain, I can't see you. It appears we've suffered a blackout. You may wish to turn the lights back on before attempting your daily task. Yeah, let's get everybody fixed up because next time we are gonna go to the other tower, bring the lighter, and we are gonna set that ablaze and see if we can turn this desert into its lush previous state. So I'm gonna end that one here for the day, guys. If you did like this one, be sure to like, subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And of course, I'll see you next time. Bye.